Hello, Dark Reader. Welcome to the Dark Side of the Library podcast. My name is Katie. On this mini-sode today, we are going to be looking at Gallant by V.E. Schwab. I know a lot of people have been hyping up this book. It's got unreal reviews, um, and it's, you know, lots of people have been waiting for it to come out. The cover itself is absolutely stunning. This came out March 1st of this year, so 2022, and it was an instant New York Times bestseller. It's doing really, really well still. So let's talk about V.E. Schwab. So one of the reasons why this book is doing well is because V.E. Schwab is incredibly famous in the American writing world. So she has done the novels Vicious, and I believe it's called Vengeful, She's also done the Shades of Magic series. Uh, she's done The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. And she does children's and YA books as well under her actual name, Victoria Schwab. Actually, they're technically both her actual names. But uh, she, do, she does V.E. Schwab for her adult novels and then Victoria Schwab for her YA novels, allegedly. One of the cool things about her, though, is that she originally planned to be a astrophysics major, but she ended up going into literature, which was hella cool, and she finished one of her first novels in sophomore year. She didn't publish it, but when she gr- before graduating college, she wrote The Near Witch and sold that novel to Disney. So unreal. She's clearly very, very good at writing. This is why I wanted to pick up Gallant. Not only that, I had a Barnes and Noble guy telling me, oh, you got to read this book. It's so good. And I was like, okay, I'll read it. So let's talk about Gallant. What is Gallant about? Why is it so like, oh, first of all, this is her first, uh, I think it's strictly horror book that she's done. Most of what she does is fantasy with some dark elements to it. This is strictly horror. Here is what the publisher has to say about Gallant. Olivia Pryor has grown up in Maryland's school for girls, and all she has of her past is her mother's journal, which seems to unravel into madness. Then, a letter invites Olivia to come home to Gallant. Yet when Olivia arrives, no one is expecting her. But Olivia is not about to leave the first place that feels like home. It doesn't matter if her cousin Matthew is hostile or if she sees half-formed ghouls haunting the hallways. Olivia knows that Gallant is hiding secrets, and she is determined to uncover them. When she crosses a ruined wall at just the right moment, Olivia finds herself in a place that is Gallant, but not. The manor is crumbling. The ghouls are solid, and a mysterious figure rules over all. Now Olivia sees what has unraveled generations of her family and where her father may have come from. Olivia has always wanted to belong somewhere, but will she take her place as a prior, protecting our world against the master of the house, or will she take her place beside him? Sounds eerie and really good, right? So let me let me just tell you a few of my thoughts on this book. So immediately I recognized that V.E. Schwab is a stunning author. The jargon she uses, the prose, uh, she writes in such a beautiful way. I mean, for real. They're just so good. The way that she describes things, the imagery, and it, it, it entices all of the senses. So... You know, the way she talks about sound, it's like, whoa, but she's utilizing adjectives that you would ordinarily see for, like, scent. So she kind of intermingles all of these feelings together, bringing this 3D world to you in your head, obviously. So she does a really great job, and I think she does a pretty good job describing things without needing to be really um, blunt and aggressive about it. So rather than the smoke is crawling up my nostrils and burning it all up, it's like all whimsical and beautiful. Way better than what I just did right there. So I give her that. Seriously, beautiful, beautiful literature. I really enjoy her writing style. But, oh, I have a big butt here. Gallant was boring. 
It was so boring. Okay, so the book was dark. And there's no trigger warnings, which is good. And I'm not going to spoil the book either for you. But I am going to tell you how I feel about the book. Because, in my opinion, I think that this book is quite dull. It has become extraordinarily difficult for me to clearly convey exactly what I dislike about this novel. Especially when we do recognize how brilliant V.E. Schwab's writing actually is. And this is why I think it's really similar to Neil Gaiman in some ways. So I'm a huge Neil Gaiman fan, but admittedly, there are parts of his works that did not jive with me, and this is possibly the same with V.E. Schwab. I can recognize she's a fantastic writer, but this book is just not hitting it. First of all, I had many times where I was kind of drifting away from the book itself. I felt myself getting very distracted very easily. There was really no draw in to the book whatsoever. And at times, I honestly felt tired. So I was definitely fighting my own need for sleep. And I'm not trying to be insulting here, but that's literally how it felt. And that's a common complaint I've actually seen on things like Goodreads and Amazon, those kinds of things. My next critique about the book is that the characters were forgettable. I honestly can only remember Olivia and her cousin Matthew. And the only reason I can remember Olivia is because she's the protagonist. And Matthew, because he's kind of a jackass. But the rest of the characters, all of the side characters... I could not give you a name anymore because I'm reviewing this a week after reading the book. And to me, that's not a good sign. I I really want to read a story that has a lot of longevity for me and my memory. And I'm recognizing the more books I read, the higher the bar has become. So in that case, it didn't hit the bar for me. So even further... Olivia's character originally is really intriguing. So we get a tiny bit of her backstory, a little bit about Gallant, why she's at the school for girls. And um, we also learn that Olivia has a disability. So she cannot speak. She has to sign. All of these things are really intriguing. I've never read a novel where our protagonist can literally not speak. So we get a lot of her internal monologue, the difficulty she has with communicating with other people and the frustration that comes with it. I really thought that was brilliantly done. But I still did not feel like Olivia was a relatable character, and I really wanted her to be. I wanted to experience the pain she was feeling, the frustration, and the even the sadness that comes with going to a place where she doesn't necessarily feel entirely welcome, and that's kind of all she's ever wanted. And I feel like this is a trope that's happened many, many times in books, and that's fine. I've I've said that before. But I really the the way to bring it home, kick it out of the park, have that really engaging character that you are connected with, and Olivia just wasn't that for me. That's even more so with the side characters. I, like I said, I can't remember their names. Uh, They kind of have pretty typical house caregiver people for, you know, the family members of Gallant. And it's just kind of like, uh, you know, we've got butler and maid or whatever. And it's just like, okay, cool. Um, So that really didn't bring it home for me. And characters are really important to my, my reading experience. Second of all, half oh, a little over half of the book is very exhausting. I think it was meant to be more of a world-building moment where we get a very slow, gothic, atmospheric burn where there's like maybe this ominous presence in Gallant. I just didn't feel it. But then it hits you like a bag of bricks. We are finally introduced to the villain around 60% of the book. And it's like, all right, we are now being submerged into a weird, creepy landscape now. So I was hoping for that really slow gothic burn because I really dig that stuff. But then getting hit so hard with like 
potentially spooky stuff was a little jarring and it didn't have an effect on me. I was like, okay, here we are. We're in a hellish landscape. This is kind of uncomfortable, but you know, it's just not that bad. I hope that makes sense. And the villain is really not notable at all. So the last issue I have with the book, and I do think this is a big problem, especially this year. So we have the, I don't know, a fad or a trend with smoky or shadow magic going on this year. And I don't understand. Uh, but it has been common for a lot of the these villains and these magical systems to have massive holes. This story has some big holes in it. Things I feel like genuinely need to be explained. There are a lot of times I was lost or I was like, well, why is this only affecting this one part of the book but not the rest of the part of the book or this one person, you know, and uh, and then just leaving it as is was a little strange. Because it's a YA book, I'm giving it a little leeway because a lot of those little tiny factors, I think a lot of teens could probably overlook some of that stuff. But there are things that I was like, I think this has to be explained and why this is the way it is. How did this uh, get resolved the way it did? So... Those were some big issues for me that really left me feeling like Gallant wasn't very memorable. But I will say Schwab's writing style left a mark on me because it is quite gorgeous. So hopefully I'll be able to read some of her other works and maybe get a different feel because this is her first strictly horror novel, it's possible there had, you know, there's some more mistakes than what normally would have been if she stuck in the lane that she's used to. So for me, Gallant was about a 2.5, maybe a 3 star. It does have a lot of really cool gothic elements, some haunted house mansion elements in it, big family issues. And if those are things that you really enjoy, you might enjoy this book. It also has a very similar feel to The Secret Garden, if not almost, I mean, like a very, very, very similar story. I got some Stranger Things vibes from this book. Also, I just watched it this weekend. And, you know, maybe some people have mentioned that it kind of has like a Crimson Peak style to it. I, I would argue probably not so much that, but but those are similar elements and themes you might see in this book. And if that's something you really enjoy, then sure, I would definitely give Gallant a go. And again, I will say it over and over again, V.E. Schwab is a very talented writer. This book just unfortunately wasn't for me. It made me sad because I was really looking forward to a really scary haunted house ghost story. For more dark books, make sure to check out our other minisodes and our other podcast episodes and stay tuned on, I think we're going to start doing more Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays will be our minisode day. So we've got a lot of new creepy books coming out all through the summer and fall as well, so stay tuned. You can also join us on Facebook, Instagram, and our Amazon live channel. We're going to be streaming a lot so make sure to come and chat with us whenever we're live. And you can find us on Amazon.com slash live slash Dark Side of the Library. Thank you so much for listening to this mini-sode. Have a creep-tastic week.